We're going to show you what we call the performance harness uh, made by Pure Motion. As you can see, this is a very unique harness. It's uh, composed of the following features. Uh, we have a very strong seatbelt webbing, two thick buckles, an adjustable strap, and very unique of the performance harness is a pulley system on each end. As you can see, there's two legs on each side attached by a piece of rope and pulley. We call it a Cyclone 29 on each end. And then on the back, you see a cross pattern that we allow with the movement that we're gonna perform, uh, free movement. And you can see, this is a very loose system to allow unrestricted movement. We're gonna show you how to use the performance harness for locomotive resistant movement, which it can be used with sleds or tires. And also we're gonna show you how to use it with a functional training machine and with a common traditional adjustable cable pulley system. Let's go ahead with the movement. Now we're gonna show you how to use the performance harness with tires or sled. Here we have a dumpster truck tire or an 80 wheeler, wheeler tire. Uh, we build, we drill a hole, put a 3-8 eyeball, connect the carabiner, and as you can see, there's an adjustable strap here, the carabiner, and the Cyclone 50 from the Airfit Pro. And this is the same adjustable strap that we use from the Airfit Pro. So if you don't have it, it can be purchased separately to be used with the performance harness. Now, first of all, we need to connect the performance harness to the Cyclone 50. The way to do it is you're gonna take each Cyclone 29 and attach to the carabiner from the Cyclone 50 right here, right here. Now this system allows a very unique movement patterns that otherwise, again, can't be done. Number one, you see how I can move freely in a north-south sagittal plane. The Cyclone 50 allows lateral plane right there. And then if I move in a circular matter, I can basically move freely in any plane of motion. We have four basic movements that we do. We call it quartet. Quartet means four, just to keep it simple. The first movement that we do is forward run. In this case, I'm gonna step through the rope, okay? Right here, in a stagger stand position, okay? And there's enough resistance for me to adapt my body in such an angle that allows me to drag the tire, like so. Okay, and again, I can go very slow or I can go a little faster. That is a function of how, how much weight we have either on the sled or the tire. I'm gonna show you how um, we perform that, this same movement, forward run, uh, in a more explosive manner. Go like this. Now here, we're, we are fulfilling the same purpose but in a more functional manner. I mean, there's a lot of force generate every time I take a step, see? And this is very conducive to running drills. Yeah. Not only you can do it as slight as you want to, to develop speed, but you're gonna get more benefit if you load the system to develop what we call strength speed. And that's pretty much your first movement called forward run. Now we're gonna show you how to perform what we call back pedal. Before um, we uh, execute uh, this movement pattern, we have to make an adjustment. The user put each hand at the end of the performance harness and just step through, turn around. As you turn around, see how easy I can make an adjustment. This is a good, um, a good time to explain um, the point that is critical to keep the system working properly. As you can see, 
the system is very, is very free. Okay? You, you want to make sure, for example, here you notice that very little, very little piece of rope from the pulley to the end loop. And see how long you know, the uh, rope we have from the pulley to the bottom end rope. We always want to keep pretty much an even distance, top to bottom. The way to do it, you use your fingers, insert your fingers on the D-ring, and just pull and see how the system self-adjusts. And, the, uh, and vice versa, uh, if we have too much rope on top and very little on the bottom, put your uh, fingers on the bottom D-ring and you self-adjust, okay? Now, <coughs> we are ready to perform now what we call back pedal. What we do, we lower your center, you know, lower your center of mass, keep your back straight, but you know, either or, or slightly angled, and then start applying force against the turf with your feet and back pedal. Okay. You have the choice to go a little lower, almost like in a sitting stance, or if you get too tired and before stopping, you stand up a little. Okay. So you have those those choices. Okay, that is back pedal. I'm going to show you how to do it in a continuous fashion. Now, from back pedal, we're going to perform one of our favorite movements, and it's called leg crossover. And this is where the harness, the performance harness, and the Cyclone 50 system uh, uh, plays a big role. And, uh, and it's, it's the only way you know, to perform this lateral frontal movement called uh, leg crossover. See, I'm going to turn, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn sideways, I'm going to turn to my right. And as I turn, see how the system allows me in a free manner to adjust and get ready for a leg crossover. What I like to do is I like to keep my, uh, in this case, right arm either here or extend it. My left arm or inside arm, I usually rest it on top of the top rope right here. Okay? What we're going to do is our inside leg is going to cross over outside leg like so. Notice my crossing leg, my, my foot, left foot is flat and my right heel is up. Pretty much all my toes on my left foot and the ball of my foot is the one uh, in contact with the ground. And I lean forward as much as necessary to move the system or drag, in this case, the tire. And see how I keep pretty much an angle straight uh, upper body see, as I go here. It's a lot of muscle engagement on my outside or inside glute here and my, or, and also my um, abductors on the left side and adductors on the, on my right uh, leg, right here. And that's leg crossover, but now see how I can go from leg crossover and seamlessly transition to back step to left leg crossover. One of the things that you need to pay attention is bo upper body position. There's going to be a tendency uh, of some users that they bend the trunk like so. And when that happens, you know, the uh, harness on the inside kind of slip away. Okay? And you see a lot of pressure here too. That means that the athlete or the, or, or the user has the trunk kind of bend it, and that's not necessary, okay? it's, it's incorrect. What you want to do, you want to keep your body straight, chest out, and leaning in an angle. See, this way. This is the correct start, okay? And we go one leg at a time, here, here. Here, here. If you're a football athlete, it would be advisable to hold the ball right here, especially those running backs. Okay? For example, if you're a baseball player, outfielder, fly ball, 
you know, this is a great drill. You can start in the back pedal, pretend there's a fly ball, and then you turn. You go for the fly ball. It's a great drill for sport specific uh, movements. Now that we show you how to perform four basic locomotive resistant movement using the performance harness, we're going to show you a sample, or give you a sample protocol that we use in order to train our athletes and, and clients. Um, instead of having just one tire, you can see that we have different level of tires. So you can have different uh, clients or athletes at different level and they can still perform at once. All this movement, all you do is attach the performance harness to the corresponding tire. Not only you can do that, but you can also add weight, either dumbbells or little sandbags, uh, <clears throat> rocks, whatever you want. So the progression is uh, very open. It can go from very, very light to extremely heavy. Now we're going to show you how to use the performance harness with either with a functional training machine. In this case, we have the uh, uh, dual cable cross from free motion. And, and then after we show uh, different locomotive resistance movement and some lever changes movement like squat, lunges, and each variation, we're going to show you the same movement that you can do with a traditional adjustable cable collar machine and even with bands. So there's, uh, there's no limitation on how you, you can use a harness even if you are in a tight space or you don't have access to an um, open space. I'm going to show you first how you can do a first step explosive movement uh, using the functional trainer. So you want to make sure that your left side is on the left arm. And I already set the weight. Okay? If you want to make it very, very hard, you can go pretty much all the way stack uh, or anywhere uh, in between. And then set the, actually the pulley. I've seen people that they attach the, the end of the carabiner, but it's actually the pulley. That's what you attach to the functional trainer arms. Now here, make sure everything's in place. Okay, move forward just a little bit. Okay, and then you can assume a, a sprinter start. Okay, we call it, we call it out of the block or uh, the um, 40 yard combine start like this. If I have my right leg forward, left leg back, I'm gonna put my left arm right here and right arm just in an angle, okay? Both heels are off the ground. There's a lot of pressure going uh, apply right now on my front foot. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna explode forward, just one explosive step, but I'm gonna stay low like so. And then I'm going to come back to my start position. Here, 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 here. The system is so unrestricted, so free, that I allow um, myself to perform such an explosive movement. Then you can switch legs. Left leg forward, right hand on the front, like this. Left elbow bend, fingers together, left, left hand, and then from here, again, both heels up, a lot of force here, okay? You can explode, strive forward, okay? And back, and stay low. First step, explosive reaction. Now we're gonna perform back pedal. Okay. It's the same, uh, I'm using the same weight as earlier. That can be changed, uh, already connected to the cable. Okay. And here I'm gonna assume a stagger stand, okay, and just perform a traditional back pedal. And then come forward in a chopping manner. You stop and then go back again. When you come forward, it feels like if you're coming downhill. It's the same, same feeling. 
Okay. Come here. Back. Back. Forward. Back. When you come forward, you can even come slow and kind of hold it. But again, see how the system is completely free, which allows you free movement. Now, a variation of back pedal is what we call front to back step. You stand in stagger stand position. I like to either be here or what we call monk, like praying, monk stance, okay? You have your back leg come forward, take a step forward, and then your right leg step back. See, left come forward, and left and right push back, see, here. See how I lower my center of mass when I come forward? And then I push back, and then come forward again, push back. Change legs, and repeat. See, take a step forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. This is a very demanding exercise drill. It loads the whole leg from the lower part of your leg all the way to your glutes. From here, we move to, again, our version of locomotive leg crossover. All the user needs to do is turn around, okay? Now, because of the features of the dual cable cross, we have the option to do something that we're gonna help us even better. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close the arms just a little bit. Press here, okay? That brings the system a little closer, which makes the movement more efficient. Now, here's the thing. When I turn, pay attention to the lower webbing. I like to, it will be advisable, to make sure the webbing is cutting you or is passing through your rib cage, not below the floating, the floating rib or even lower. Okay? There's some pressure when you start getting into heavier loads. What you want to do is just raise it up a little bit, then you turn. Instead of starting with your leg like parallel, stand laterally like so. Kind of a stagger stand. Lateral, stagger stand, like that. Okay? Then from here, now you are ready for your right leg cross over your right. But the, uh, notice my left foot is flat and my right heel is up. Only the ball of my foot and my right toes are in contact with the ground. Okay? The movement starts with my left leg crossing over my right, okay? And I explode. And then when I'm here, I turn and I come forward. One, two, and then my right turn, and I'm ready to go again. Here, and I come forward, I turn, come forward, I'm ready again, and I explode. See, I turn, see how I turn 90 degrees, okay? And I go one, two, he will go again, see? This is a very powerful move for lateral power development. And then the same thing you can do the other side. You turn lateral, adjust your webbing right here, and move your, your left leg, goes back slightly, Lateral stand, and then as you lean forward, bring your right leg to the side like this. See, from here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And that's leg crossover using functional trainer. In addition to locomotive resistant movement with the performance harness, we'll show you how to do uh, squats in each variation and also some lunges in each variation. Right? If you, again, if you have a functional trainer, it's a very simple uh, way to engage the performance harness with such a device. We like to use, in this particular case, uh, some plyo boxes, a small one, and then just a little higher one, and the way to set up the athlete or the client is to step forward, sit down on the plyo box and then attach the 
carabiner to each Cyclone 29. Then, and then, I already made my waist selection. Then from here, I put my hands, each arm, stand up. There's no resistance yet. And then now I'm gonna feel some resistance. So I make sure my ropes are pretty much even. Stand up a little, step back. Okay, make an adjustment here, comfortable. Put my hands here, and I'm gonna take a step in an angle. See how I am positioned? So I'm kind of can um, to counterweight uh, the waist tight that I am gonna handle in a minute. I'm gonna step here, step in the next step, and I'm here. Now, you have two options. You either perform a hip width squat, okay? Stand kind of tall, chest out, and then as you come down, I like to bend my elbows like this, and then come up and explode and bring my heels off the pliable just slightly, like this. You can do it as slow or as fast as you want. If you have, for example, a basketball player, okay, it resembles a jump shot. Where they, we have clients, they have a basketball in their hand and they perform the same, same movement, okay? Now, a variation of, the, of this quarter squat is a stagger stand squat. So we just stagger a little bit front foot, flat on the plyo box. Rear foot, as you can see, heel is exposed. The ball of my foot and toes in contact with the plyo box. We prefer this, this stance, okay? What allows this stance is not only to perform the quarter squat, or you can do half, but we like to lean a little bit to the front or weighted side, about 55-60% of the weight comes to the front leg, right here. You can do it slow, okay? And then you change leg, right here. The reason why we like to keep your uh, elbows bent, hands high, so your back stays straight, but angle. That's the whole reason. Right here. Okay, you can bend a little bit, you're free, see? There's no restriction here. Okay, hip width, quarter to half squat, and stagger stand, quarter to half squat. Then step down, down, Spread your legs, come forward, sit down, and release. Bomber's lunge with the performance harness. All I did again is adjust the pulley to each carabiner of the functional training machine, load it properly. I'm going to move back, get in the launch stance, okay? Make sure that the uh, the webbing around my rib cage. Now, see how my front foot is slightly tilted in, okay? That allows my five toes to be exposed in that load. If I'm straight, uh, I don't have a good balance and only my big toe is the one taking the load. So it's not really that efficient. And my knee in that position doesn't feel too comfortable either. So just a slight turn, just like that, okay? Then my back heel is up again. I'm gonna raise my hands. Okay, again, kind of like a monk praying stance, we call it. And then from here, I'm gonna perform two movements. Knee flexion, well, there's ankle, knee, and hip flexion, but it's more, the knee is pretty obvious. And you're also gonna see how I change my center of mass by coming down a little bit, see? Here, and I push back. So as I come forward, I lower my center of mass. When I go back, I extend my knee and raise my center of mass, and then, you're gonna see also how I bend my trunk slightly to the front leg, like that. And that creates additional muscle activation, okay? This is phenomenal, you just burn. Not only the whole leg, but also your glutes. And the same thing with the other leg. Like so, here, tilt a little bit, and then come forward. See, flexion, extension, low, high. 
Palmer's launch. This is phenomenal for athletic movement. For example, tennis, when you run, you stop to do a backhand, wrestling, shooting, uh, sports like football that you accelerate and then you de decelerate, change your direction. It's phenomenal. It's very hard. Yeah, any machine out there to really replicate this movement. And it can be done with the performance harness. Another way of using the performance harness, assuming that you don't have an open space or a functional training machine, uh, maybe you have an adjustable cable pulley system. This is very traditional. It's available in many GMs, health club. Um, we can easily use the performance harness and pretty much the same movement we've been teaching you by just adding, again, the Cyclone 50 to the adjustable cable pulley. So what, all we do, we, make, we connect the carabiner from the Cyclone 50 to the adjustable pulley system, okay? And then we connect each end, of the car each carabiner to, again, to the pulley, all right? Just like this. And the other Cyclone 29 go by here. And again, because we want to apply force against the ground, the best way, the best way of doing this is to bring the adjustable cable forward to the bottom. Okay? And then how, now you can see how we can perform the same basic movement that we've been showing you with sled, tires, functional trainers. Here we go. First step, explosive movement, or we like to call it out of the box, okay? Right here, okay? Same movement, okay? Then you can also perform back pedal. Now, make sure that the transition from forward movement, out of the box, all you gotta do is step through, you're good to go, okay? If you have any uneven distance from the end loop to the pulley, see? Make your adjustment. Okay, done. Here you can do your back pedal and chop back, forward, or your leg crossover. See, that's a smooth transition. You can go from back pedal to leg crossover. And then do one, you can do two. Spin, chop, 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 transition, and go again. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. See? And this is again a phenomenal drill. And again, you can do it uh, both sides simultaneously, or alternating actually. You go like this, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, turn. One, two, three, turn, one, two, three. You can turn, one, two, three, and then come forward and stop. There are multiple ways of performing, again, locomotive resistant movement using the performance harness in a multiplanar environment.
in this same setup from Bomber's Launch, you can also do what we call one leg anterior reach, no hands. Again, make sure that rope is properly positioned, okay? We're gonna do a one, you can do stagger stand and just reach back. See how the pulley works with you, all right? And as the plan progresses, you can go from stagger stand to one leg. I like to spread my arms even more, raise my leg, my front, my loaded foot, slightly tilt it in, keep my head up. Here. Have you seen figure skaters doing this position when they land? It's nothing different. It's very, very demanding. Control this load. I'm feeling all over my leg and here, and my hamstring as well. It's called one leg and teeter reach. If you don't have a functional trainer, then you and, and you have access to an adjustable cable pulley system, okay? All you have to do again with the Cyclone 50 attachment, just make sure you attach it to the adjustable cable pulley system, and the Cyclone attached to the performance harness, and you're good to go. You assume your once everything is properly attached, lift the waist stack, get on your bon uh, launch position, okay? Front foot slightly tilt in, hands high, close to the upper webbing of the harness. And again, you're gonna perform an ankle knee hip flexion, but it's mostly knee dominant flexion with a low, lower center of mass. And see how I tilt my body to the side just a little, and I come back to my start position. So you go from finish, stand, finish, stand. Here. All right, and then you can do the other leg. Okay, left foot tilted in, hands up again, and as I lower my center of mass, I flex my knee. Of course, there is hip and ankle flexion. When I come up, I extend my, my leg, ankle, knee, hip, and raise my body upward, and then repeat, and tilt your body slightly to the side every time you come down. While my lunge. From here, you can transition to stagger stand and teeter reach. Again, right here, go forward, up. See, I keep my body straight but angle. Okay. It's working your lower back, your glutes. And if you want to increase the progression, all you have to do is raise one leg. Spread your arm for balance. Up. See, I flex my knee just a little bit. Okay. As so I reach forward, it's a little knee flexion. Back. And then change leg, raise your hand, raise your leg, reach, back, reach, back. See how I work not only strength development, balance, coordination, stability, everything at once. I hope you enjoy your new performance harness.